Yeah, well, the only, the only trick is the last piece on top. And it just tells you have to be really careful when you mm -hmm. set it up because it's precarious. Yeah. All right. But uh, other than that, it's really... Yeah, okay. Let's just so we can it. set it up. Yeah. And then you can... Because it really you can just take it all down. Yeah. If you have to. I mean, it's not like going to be... Okay. And once you set up... trunks from the performances that contain the relics and then this piece the top piece which sits on this stool which goes on the top it's called the human object and it was a piece where during the period of a show, people were asked to uh, come and feed this every day. And there was a stove and food, and then there were four or five people that came every day and fed it. And this rag, which is stuffed in its mouth, was an opening. People would feed it, cook the food and feed it. And then there was a room you could take it into, and they were also required to talk to it. So it was like part of an installation piece. Maybe we can take this one over there. That yellow one will go over here. Do you always think that ultimately you arrive at the right choice? I mean, along the way, your your mind is like going. If I have is long enough to this work, and ultimately, I prefer to work on something for a long time. You know, like sometimes pieces are gone. And, I mean, not like everything sells, because that's not the case at all. But there are pieces that I really wanted to continue to work on mm -hmm. that are now hard to work on. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I've kind of lately, if I do sell a piece, I've sort of told people that. I'd like to continue to work on it. You know? Because sometimes there isn't, you don't, you know, there's so much about making a piece, then you're like as if there's a finished date when the show's done. Yeah. You know, like all of a sudden you have the show and the piece is supposed to be done. You know? And, uh, you know, like so you, may, you may be, you may make the piece right up to the day of the show and then you show the piece and then, you know, like you, you start thinking about it. And this piece, this piece, in a way, I kind of worked on this piece for 20 years. I mean, right now, I don't think about it changing at all. Yeah. I mean, this is the props ended up in trunks because that was a convenient way to keep them. Most of the props were lost uh, in the performances. I mean, like probably, uh, you know, like this is like. I don't know, 15, 20% of what there was. Most of these were put in the suitcases to travel. And, and then at one point, I was really into the suitcases, like the suitcases. I like the idea of things ending up being stored. This is how I stored my work, but also that you couldn't get inside to see the other stuff, that somehow a change had happened. It didn't look like, it wasn't like the relics were being displayed there was like the suitcases in the first for a long time there was no 
indication that these had anything to do with performance. And um, when the piece was first showed, there was nothing that said that it was related to performance or related to... It was simply a sculpture? It was simply a sculpture. I've always seen it that way. Mm -hmm. And then when I... And then taking these props and making them into photographs, I didn't really want to indicate that uh, they were performance related. Like now there's something else. Like I like the idea that it was something else. Well, I like the idea of kind of like archaeology, like looking into the box, like sort of demystifying it. You know, just making it, yeah, they're just objects, they're just dirty objects, like sort of taking it all apart and photographing each one. And at the time when I did that, in the early 80s, I was really interested in this sort of idea of Western culture and the whole idea of archaeology, like majoring and trying to reconstruct history precisely, digging up the past or measuring an airplane wreck, you know, like a crash airplane like that. When I remember when the planes crashed in Scotland and they, they tried to, when the, the bombing... Yeah, the bunker beach. And they measured, like, the, the complete, you know, like, each piece and each measurement of each piece and where it was and the sifting through the wreckage. And when I did this, it was sort of, in a way, a, a kind yeah, of satire, you know, like a kind of satire on Western culture's obsession with the reconstruction and the precise measuring of history. So it was kind of a joke. So, it. But it was also demystifying my own work, in a way, turning these into, you know, I mean, they look like commodities. So, uh, you know, photographing them as commodities, but yet, you know, the background colors are pretty, almost putrid in a way, and the sort of shit green, and, mm -hmm. and the pink, and I think there's a kind of beauty in them, but the, it's not the same as a kind of flat, as a kind of, they, they maintain this sort of ugliness in a way. They're like commodity mm -hmm. photographs, but they're not. They're like tabletop photographs, but they're not. They're like, I don't know, maybe 150 objects in the trunks. I don't know, somewhere around there. Once I started photographing each thing, it was kind of like, oh, why am I doing this? You know, like, why am I taking everything out? Maybe they should have just been left there. You know? mm -hmm. well, but now, you know, time yeah. passes. Yeah. About there. Okay. Something like that. Steve. Hey. Don't take pictures of me signing hard. <laughs> <laughs>